Hey everybody, Saxcat here with a, another Talking Sierra. This time we are going to finish ranking the Sierra King's Quest games. Uh, when we left off, we had kind of done the crap of the crap. Hi, Kitty. Bye, Kitty. <laughs> um, the creme de la creme of crap. Uh, you know, we had some Sega Master System vomit-inducing game and some King's Quest V for the NES, and then we had a couple of good games in there, too. So, we are at number six, and number six is the remake of King's Quest One. Hi, Kitty. So, this is what we're looking at here, the Quest for the Crown. Uh, this is the uh, VGA version here, and... I very much enjoyed this little remake from 1990. They did a great job with it. Uh, the music is very good. The animation is very good. I wish they would have done the second game this way too. Hi, I'm getting licked. Hi. But this is um, a very good game, but it's very dated. And that's why I have to put it so far back on the list because <laughs> it's still in a parser system and uh, that'll really alienate the game for a lot of people, but but not for me. Even even Cedric here, Cedric will go, Ooh, you should play this game, everyone! It doesn't suck! Woo! So shut up, Cedric. Okay, oh, oh Cedric fell. Oh, mm, wait. There, I punched Cedric. He's gone. We don't have him anymore. So, I really do think that this is a great game. Uh, this is the first way I play King's Quest 1. So, pick up a copy. You can get this really cheap like ridiculously cheap so you know go on eBay or Amazon before people start realizing that you could get a lot more money for these games so you know my number six spot is King's Quest 1 you know the 1990 remake number five I don't have a box for because it came out digitally and that would be King's Quest 2015 why is it so far back on the list well it's not a point-and-click kind of game. They changed it up. I didn't like that aspect of it. But I loved the story. I really, really did. Um, the story was the best part of that game. It got a little convoluted in, like, chapters 4 and 5 when they kind of got a little puzzle crazy. And I didn't really roll too well with that. I thought the puzzles got incredibly ridiculous as it went on. And it got to the point to where I didn't like it for a little bit. I didn't say much about it then because I wanted the game to do well. And I know it did do pretty well, but it is nowhere near as good as the next four on the list. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this game, mostly because I've done it on my channel and you can go watch it and you can get my, my brand new opinions. Literally, we were playing it blind, so there are a lot of opinions that I had throughout and it was Disco Bob and I, so there's a whole lot that we do during those, so just check out my playthrough if you would like any more information on King's Quest 2015. So next, we have number four, King's Quest V. A lot of people thought this would be number one on my list, and to be honest, this is number one in my heart. Uh, I love this game so much, it's, I love you, but this is actually the original version I had. If you if you can tell, if you look at the box, it's really different from what you would expect. Um, I didn't mean to have to rub my nose there, but I had to. <laughs> um, this this game means a lot to me because it was one of the first CD-ROM games I ever played. But it has lots and lots of faults, um, and I'm going to list those faults. Are you ready? Here we go. Bad voice acting. Yes. Crazy puzzles. Yes. Random shit. Yes. Like, and here's what I think. Roberta Williams had this brand new technology at her disposal, and they basically just made, you know, this area have deserts and waterfalls and sea and mountains. They just wanted to do everything they could do with the new technology. And it was mind-blowing at the time how beautiful it was, and the music was fantastic in places. The town music is awful. I hate it. Can't stand it. But there is some really nice music in places that made you really feel like you're part of the game. Uh, the forest in particular. But the narrator is so bad. And now, I will say there is one good voice actor, and that would be for King Graham. So, you know, I really enjoy that. I would have this game at number one if it didn't have the glaring faults. Also, the maze in Mordax Castle is terrible. Uh, if you would like to hear more on this, obviously you can also watch our Let's Play. I have two Let's Plays of this. I have one with... 
AR-21 and I from a long, long time ago, and then from two years ago we should have the King's Quest V with Disco Bob and I that a lot of people have enjoyed. So check either one of those out, and please play this game. It's not as bad as what people think it is, but there are just better games in the series. Next up, at number three, King's Quest III to Air is Human. I really, really have changed my mind on this game over the years. This would have been a lot farther back. It is not now. Uh, spoiler alert, you're playing as Prince Alexander, but a game that's 30 years old, you can go ahead and give the spoiler alert for. When it first came out, people did not know. A lot of people thought you'd be playing as Valenice, and all of a sudden you're playing this slave boy. And, you know, the best thing about this is you have a time limit to save yourself. Once you turn 18, you're dead. You have to find out how to get rid of Mananan so that you can survive and then move away and get away from Ludor. So, very, very awesome game. I have not played the original on the channel yet. A lot of people want me to. We did play one of the ADGI um, remakes of it a while back, so if you'd like to see at least, it's, it is essentially the original game just with point and click interface. So if you'd like to see that, you know, it is on the channel. Um, but this game is, has a great villain. You really don't know what to do if you don't have a player's guide. You're just like, uh, I don't know. And you know, you have to fig find out how long Mananan's gonna be gone, when he's gonna come back, what items that you can have that will keep you from dying, what ones will kill you if you have them on your person, you know, and then how to make the cat cookie in order to make Mananan no longer harmful to you. So, great game, great story, just an all-around great game. You, you can't, you have to ignore the graphics, that's not an issue with this game. They are as good as they can be for the era. It's just a fantastic game. Now, at number two, this was tough. I almost went in a different direction. You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stay with my, my guns on this. I was about to change it. But at number two, we have King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosella, one of my favorite games of all time. This game mixes batshit ridiculous hardness with the best of the late 80s graphical engines. Uh, a lot of what, like, Quest for Glory 1 and 2 were done. I love that era. I love what it looks like. But the cool thing here was that you are literally playing as one of the best female protagonists of that era. This is before they ruined Rosella. Rosella is fantastic in this. You you know, she's here, she's saving her father. She has reasons to be there. And you can lose, you can screw up and fail at this mission. You cannot save King Graham, he can die. And that is a great, great part of this game. There is actual time. Uh, you have to do things by a specific point. Uh, the enemy Lelote is amazing. You actually murder Lelote. It's a very, hello, interesting, you know, concept. But for those of you that understand this game, I'll give you the one thing that keeps me from putting it at number one. And that would be the shovel. That's all I have to say about that. So we will move on to number one, which you should all know what it is, because most people think it's the best. But I, I have to agree, it is the best. We have King's Quest VI. Air today, gone tomorrow. And I will give you a couple little reasons why this is the best in the series. The story is definitely one of the reasons. The voice acting is another reason. Great voice acting. The narrator is fantastic. The game has multiple endings. You can beat it several different ways. You can choose to leave the genie alive, let him die. There's all sorts of things that can happen in this. and It's just an all-around fantastic game. I can't say enough about it positively. There's very few negatives to me about this game. I know there are people that don't like it. Well, they're, they are wrong if they don't like it. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you, you are wrong. It is a fantastic game. It's kind of a... Mm, uh, I really like Perils of Roseau. Kitty, kitty, look what you did. And you scared yourself, too. You knocked over computer games. You knocked off Perils of Roseau. So, anyway. You need to play this game if you haven't. If you're not going to go buy it, I mean, I've paid $12 for this in box. Um, then you need to at least watch a Let's Play, which, spoiler alert, we have two of them on the channel. One with Aher21 and then one with Disco Bob. Uh, the Disco Bob one is a lot better because I knew a lot more about what I was doing at the time. 
<laughs> the area when you go into, you literally go to hell to save people. It's just fantastic how you do this. The magic spells are brought back from the third game. Everything just works out in your favor in this. And Jane Jensen just wrote a fantastic story. I wish she'd stayed on the King's Quest games so we could have got the Black Cloak Society ending that we wanted, that we did not get. I would love Jane Jensen to write a story about that. But we're not going to get it. So this is as close as you're going to get to perfection in the King's Quest series. So pick up these games. Pick up all these games, except maybe the Master System version and the NES version. And maybe King's Quest Seven. I, I don't like it. I know a lot of people do like it, but I can't. I can't. I just can't. It's too. It's too different. Now, granted, people do. I will. I, while we're well, you know what? No, I'm not going to talk about it here. I'll make that into another Talking Sierra episode about why they made the changes to King's Quest Seven, and we can debate it there. I'm not going to debate it now. Um, now, Talking Sierra is going to become something a little different after this. There will be, you know, lists and discussions, but Talking Sierra is also going to become a chronological order of Sierra adventure games. Not necessarily the simulations, I may do some on those too, but it's going to be the point and click games and the parser system games and stuff like that. If you want to see some of the other ones, we can discuss it later, but it will be a chronological listing of all Sierra adventure games. This is what Talking Sierra eventually was going to become if it did well, which it has done well, so I guess I'm gonna have to do that. So thank you for that. <laughs> now there are a couple places that you can go to keep updated with me and how we're gonna do things. If you would like to stay in touch, the best way to do it is either my Facebook, which is SaxCat20, or my Twitter, which is also SaxCat20. Very easy to find those. Um, I update everything that comes up on the channel. I put up a few things every now and then, put pictures up of new games I pick up. Uh, I try my best to keep you all updated with what's going on with the channel, so when I disappear sometimes for a week at a time, you know what's going on. Um, you can also, if you would, <laughs> I hate doing this, I feel like I'm begging for money. I do have a Patreon at SaxCat20. Um, I might do some adjustment to make that more about Talking Sierra and how to get different tiers of things going, but, you know, a couple dollars here and there would help me immensely. You would have no idea being a teacher and trying to do all the things I do and still have this channel. It's pretty difficult. So, this has been SaxCat20. Thanks for watching. Keep watching. Keep liking videos. There's tons of stuff on the channel. We're having a rough time right now. I don't know why the, the views have dropped so much, but they really have... So do, you know, do what you can to help us by liking the videos, sharing the videos, and just getting my channel out there to more people. I think that would help immensely. A lot of people do not know that we exist, and I think that we could get a whole lot more going with just some simple shares and likes. So thank you again for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and stay tuned for the next Talking Sierra or the many, many Let's Plays that will be on the channel. Thank you again. Stay tuned.